Hi friends, it's a wonderful Sunday and uh, as I thought that today we'll be discussing about the class 2 cavity preparation modifications. I am thankful to all the viewers who have liked my earlier video on uh, class 2 cavity preparation. So today we'll be discussing about modification which is very important because uh, this, been, this has been asked very commonly in your uh, entrance exam and even in your viva so let's directly jump to these modifications the first modification being the design what you see in the mandibular first premolar okay and the question is why you have to be so careful when you are preparing class 2 in mandibular first premolar and the answer is very simple the first reason being that the lingual lingual cusp of the uh, mandibular first premolar is very small and i'm sure all of you know this you compare it with any premolar the lingual cusp of mandibular first premolar is very small and the second is that this is also a very important mcq question that the crown is tilted 30 degrees to the root okay so that means you have a pulp chamber which is tilted 30 degrees as you can see in this image the red line is the outline of the crown and the blue line indicates the long axis of the root so if you actually join and see the angle form you will realize that the uh, crown is tilted so because of this uh, we have to uh, remember one important point that if you directly start preparing cavity preparation which is long axis uh, parallel to the long axis of the tooth then there is a very high chance that you will either you know expose the uh, buccal pulp horn or you may undermine the lingual cusp so in order to overcome this uh, anatomic issue we have to tilt the burr lingually and now in this image you can see that the pulpal floor is also slanting towards the lingual side so when you do this you are actually preventing the harming of uh, pulp horn on the buccal side but also you are making sure that the lingual cusp is not undermined so when you are doing class 2 on mandibular first premolar you have to know this point that you have to tilt the bar and the second being the presence of a transverse ridge which is there in mandibular first premolar and also present in many other premolars but since the tooth structure is very small you won't have to unnecessarily extend the uh, occlusal step in this transverse ridge remember these ridges are very important for the strength of the restoration and the tooth so whenever you want to save these ridges simply stop your occlusal step before this transverse ridge so by doing this you are actually saving a good amount of structure of the tooth which is eventually going to increase the life of the restoration because it increases the resistance form of the tooth so let's talk about the second modification which you commonly see in maxillary first molar because here we have to consider the presence of oblique ridge and of course many times you will also have caries which is present along with class 2 which may be extending on lingual or buccal feature okay so what are the modifications which you can do for class 2 in maxillary first molar or even you can apply for the second molar so here you can go for a conservative restoration this i have already explained in the class 2 cavity preparation video i hope that you will check it out it has a very good watch time and liked by viewers a lot so in this as you can see the oblique ridge is paired and this should be done whenever you have a caries which is not extending to the oblique ridge if it is extending to the oblique ridge then of course your preparation will cross the oblique ridge and may go to the other side of the tooth structure suppose you have a decay which is there on the palatal fissure 
then you can also include this in your class 2 but first you have to prepare the class 2 and then you have to go for these extensions okay so, so that is what you have to remember let's talk about the third modification which is very important and many times student find it very difficult to understand so that you see in maxillary first premolar that's because it's very important most of the the line where the smile ends is generally at this two structure so aesthetically this is important here you see two important modifications one that you have to restrict the buccal wall of the proximal box within the contact if the lesion is very small generally we advise breaking the contact because that gets the margin in self cleansable area but here you have to make sure that you don't break the buccal contact of course if the caries is more you will have to break it but suppose if the caries is small generally we break the contact here we won't try to break the buccal contact the second being we generally give occlusal convergence for amalgam restoration but here you will keep the wall straight to the long axis of the tooth that is the buccal wall not the lingual wall and the reason is because you want to minimize the exposure of amalgam in the aesthetic zone so let me explain you with the help of a diagram here you can see here the buccal contact is marked by a black line and if the lesion was very small we have not broken the contact on the buccal side if you want to learn more about uh, what is breaking the contact then it is also given in the class 2 video so by preventing the breaking of contact you can see in the second image that the amalgam is not visible outside okay but the same way if you follow the traditional protocol that you have to break the contact both buccally and lingually but if you do it in maxillary first premolar the restoration will be then visible when the patient smiles so in order to prevent this unesthetic exposure of the restoration and if the lesion is minimal then you can prevent the uh, breaking of the or you can avoid the breaking of the contact on the buccal side then the next modification is a box only preparation which is very simple generally we have a occlusal step we have a isthmus and we have the uh, proximal box here we will only have proximal box now what is the advantage very simple if the decay is restricted to the proximal box and if it is small not extending to the occlusal surface then why you actually need the occlusal step right so we are going more towards conservation and that's why box only preparations are very popular it depends on how wide is your proximal box how deep the axial decay has extended so depending on that situation you have to decide whether the box only preparation would be helpful or in order to increase the retention you have to do the occlusal step okay next important point that are the two modifications are based on a very important parameter you should know that marginal ridge is very important for the strength of the two structure okay and traditionally whenever we want to do a class 2 preparation and the lesion is generally present below the contact area in order to gain access to this contact area we approach the class 2 from the marginal ridge if the decay is already involving the marginal ridge then this question doesn't arise but many times you will have a lesion which is below the contact and rest all the area above the uh, above the lesion carious lesion is very good so there are many designs which aim to preserve this marginal ridge and remove the decay in the same time so if you see a book called as marzuk which is very good and whenever possible if you have time you should go through this you will realize that how important is the marginal ridge 
all these parameters which is there on your screen makes you realize that losing one marginal reach can lead to loss of tooth resistance to 30 percent along with when you when you actually widen the isthmus area also if you lose two marginal ridge then you can also lose 45 percent of tooth resistance so it is very important that you save the marginal ridge and based on these two factors based on this important factor there are two cavity designs that is the slot and tunnel preparation so comes to the let us talk about the fifth modification that is the slot preparation and what is different in this compared to the traditional box only or any conventional class 2 preparation this is generally indicated wherever a patient is old now what does this say that you have a gingival recession which is very commonly seen and that's why the gingival embrasure is very large and second, if you have an adjacent missing teeth, then you have a very nice access to the class 2 lesion. So how it is, how is it done? How is it different from the conventional class 2 preparation? You can see in this image that traditionally, if we have to remove decay here, we'll cut through this marginal ridge and we'll reach here. But here we are going from the buccal side and reaching this lesion and removing the decay so by doing this you are actually saving the marginal reach this is only possible if you have a decay which is present below the contact and rest all area above is intact if the decay is involving the marginal reach this won't be of any use you would probably follow the conventional preparation what is the limitation very simple suppose you have an adjacent teeth here and you try to do it you might even hurt the adjacent tooth that is one limitation second if the gingiva is there in this area then you won't be able to approach it very easily because you will also hurt the gingiva and then you will have the bleeding so this is mostly indicated when there is gingival recession that's why old age is considered to be a indication then the tunnel preparation very important question for three marks uh, most of the time this is not followed very routinely but there are practitioners who use this and here also the aim is to save marginal reach as you can see in this image the preparation looks like a tunnel it starts from the occlusal area and is aimed at reaching the proximal surface which you can appreciate in this image we start from here and if the proximal lesion is located here then we extend from occlusal area to the proximal surface so once you do the preparation we put the matrix band and then generally glass inomer is indicated either you can fully fill it with the glass inomer cement or you can do glass inomer cement in the deeper portion and do the composite now you may ask me why glass enomer cement because the, it has a limitation this preparation has a limitation similar with slot preparation here also we may not be able to remove the decay completely because we have a difficult accessibility we can't see it if you remove the marginal ridge we can clearly see what is the lesion in the proximal box and you can remove it very easily but here you are leaving the marginal ridge which is intact and then it is leading to the restoration so you may still leave some amount of decay so in order to arrest that lesion we give GIC in deeper portion because it has anti-karyogenic if you want to learn more about all the cements then I have a whole playlist on dental cements which can make your work very simple it highlights all the important points and makes you understand the topic better the links will be in the description then the next modification which is seen in rotated teeth which is very simple here whenever you have slight rotation you have to consider where is the contact and where is the lesion okay we don't follow the traditional design here we have to modify it based on the presence of lesion and the contact as you can see in the first image 
the cavity preparation is directed to break the contact. Whereas in second image, you will see that the buccal wall, buccal surface has become the mesial surface. So here we are considering the mesial, the buccal surface, which is present in the mesial area. And then you go through this, which may weaken the two structure, right? But in this area, we have to do it, even though it's a cuspal implant. So that is the modification which we'll do here. And then you can also do class two restoration, which the Stradovan textbook mentions that if you have a healthy, good restoration, which is present already on the other side, and you want to make a preparation on the other remaining side, and there is a new class two lesion, then you can prepare a class two and this extension has to be perpendicular to the earlier restoration. Okay. There are various parameters based on which you have to decide whether you want to do it. Please check the series on fundamentals of tooth preparation, which can be really helpful to you. Then the modification, the last one is the, uh, if you want to do a class two with class five, and now this is, has a, this has a very important point that the textbook says that if you have a class two lesion and a class five lesion, don't try to prepare and restore it together. First prepare class two and then restore it and then prepare the class five and then restore it. That is because if you prepare a class two and then you prepare a class five and then even though you put a matrix band, condensing amalgam in this area becomes really difficult. So this principle that you have to first prepare class two, restore it first and then prepare class five and then restore it has to be followed for this modification. If you have any difficulty and if you want to know more about any cavity designs for with respect to class two, please leave a comment either in this live section or in the future recorded sections. I will surely try to make a new video on it. I request you to subscribe to my channel and do check all the videos. Please visit the playlist section and I hope that this video was helpful to you. I will see you once again with one more video very soon. Have a great Sunday.